happy Good Shepherd Sunday to everyone. So I borrowed the Deacon Chuck as uh, props today as we celebrate the Good Shepherd Sunday. So the powerful message of Jesus for all of us today is that I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So that's the good news for all of us today as we celebrate the Good Shepherd Sunday. So always remember that uh, Jesus has come to bring life for all of us and to know what life he possesses is to know his actions and listen to his words so always remember that man does not live by bread alone you receive it for free give it for free so in a world as complex as ours we need masters of our life to help us choose which to take among many paths being presented to us so jesus as the good shepherd continues to be contemporary of our time as to all seasons and generations for he is the gate of our lives the gate of the way that leads us to life a life of abundance so let us pray in our mass today the following intentions for good health and protection of walls and pestigo parishioners our families relatives friends and frontliners also for the following souls edward malishuk offered by marcy malishuk Lucelle Vogel, son Michael and grandson Michael, offered by Joanne Smith, for Charles, Edna, and Nancy Walters. So type your intentions in your screen so that uh, we will include your intentions in our masses. So happy Good Shepherd Sunday. This is again Deacon chuck props i'll use it in the beginning when you see a ship me it reminds you of jesus as our shepherd so for five minutes we will start the holy mass So right now I'm here at my backyard. You will see the beautiful trees. Now I'm ready to go inside the church for the mass. So this is the passageway from my rectory to the church. This is the sanctuary of uh, St. Mary Parish, and the Jack has arrived. Hello, everybody. So we are making ready for the night, the Mass. And this is the sanctuary of the church. This is the St. Mary Tabernacle. And for Mass today, I have uh, two churchgoers, and they are preparing now for the music.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate his, his sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children, and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments, and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Peter, Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, free from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you have gone astray like sheep, but you are now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger, they will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Thanks to you, Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I started this live video at the beginning of the Mass in my backyard to remind you of the field wherein the shepherd pastures his lambs. And also I showed you the shepherd's stick and for our present setting, we use that, we call it as a pastoral staff, wherein the, di the bishop of the diocese is the one using it during his special occasions or masses. 
the shepherd stick represents his power to, to discipline and to guide his flock, his sheep or lambs. So the same thing in the case of the bishop as the shepherd of the diocese, that pastoral staff represents his authority to teach so that all people may listen, like the shepherd in the field, his voice needs to be recognized by the sheep or lambs so that they will not get lost. And I also showed you Deacon's Chuck uh, toy lamb <laughs> as I began this uh, Mass to remind us of ourselves. So we are that sheep or lamb that are being tanned by Jesus or being represented by our bishop. So I did it because today we celebrate the Good Shepherd Sunday. And uh, for our reflection today, let us ask ourselves and let us try to answer this question. What should we understand about Jesus being the Good Shepherd? First, we knew very well that Jesus gives his life for us. If we want to follow his example, we must give ourselves for each other. So how did his life give for us? So let us start at the beginning. First, he set aside his divinity to take on human flesh in the incarnation. This alone should tell us how much God loves us. He didn't enter a kingdom prepared for him. Instead, it was in a stable. He lived his life in poverty. Religious leaders accused him of blasphemy. Political leaders accused him of treason. He was brutally whipped, crowned with thorns, crucified, and buried. If this is all that was needed for him to die for us, why did he go through all these things? In a way, there are many other ways that are much easier or less painful. But Jesus opted to happen that way. We hear his voice. Loving someone means that we are willing to give our lives for them, like Jesus did. Regardless of the suffering or the pain, now He takes His humanity and exalts it through the resurrection. He has a glorified body, a glorified human body that can now enter heaven to be with God, where we will hear the voice of God. This is the example that the Good Shepherd wants to say when he tells us to give our lives. The human body can now enter heaven. Through him, the relationship between God and man has been reconciled. So as for the Good Shepherd being the example of the gate, as mentioned in our Gospel, 
we know that to enter heaven, we must enter through the narrow gate. The Good Shepherd is more than just the gate. So what is the gate there for? The gate is death. To follow Jesus' example, we all must die to ourselves. We have to carry our crosses as Jesus did. What sufferings and challenges have been given to us? They are our crosses. But just as Jesus carried his cross, we carry ours also. The cross is the gate that opens eternal life for us with Jesus. Understanding this truth about Jesus being the Good Shepherd, the next question is, how do we respond to the call of the Good Shepherd or of Jesus? In the Gospel, Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd who knows his sheep. He lays down his life for them and raised up again. All of us are called to entrust our lives to the Good Shepherd, to entrust to him our cares, our worries, especially this time, to allow him to lead us back when we stray and to allow him to teach us how to serve one another just as he cares for us. By baptism, all of us are called to be holy and to serve in the life of the church or to use the language of Pope Francis we are all called to be missionary disciples, followers of Christ, members of the flock who bear witness to Christ's love in our lives. So I ask everyone here joining in this Mass, please pray for religious vocations that many more young men and women will answer God's call. We should also pray for those already in the seminaries, in the religious houses of formation at this time, that they will persevere in accepting God's call. And please pray for the bishops, priests, deacons, and those in consecrated life, that God will strengthen us in our vocations in order to lead us in the ways of truth and love. As we celebrate this Eucharist, Jesus the Good Shepherd comes to us in the Eucharist in this very moment. May we open our hearts to Him in love and thank Him for loving us infinitely and personally. May we listen to his voice and follow this good shepherd wherever he leads us. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Loving God, secure in your love, we turn to you and we pray. For the church, that we may hear and respond to the voice of the Good Shepherd, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations and cities, that they may be mindful of those who are most vulnerable and in need as they develop and carry out policies and laws, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who face persecution as a result of their commitment to live as Christian people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who live in fear, depression, or anxiety, that they may know God's love and compassion throughout our care and the service of doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those afflicted, by the COVID-19 pandemic, whether by health issues or economic issues, that together with our Lord and Savior, we may persevere. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and all who grieve for them, remembering especially today's intentions, Edward Malachuk, Lucille Vogel, Charles, Edna, and Nancy Walters, that they may be welcome into the loving arms of our Lord and Savior Jesus in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And also for those prayers who have spoken in our hearts and in our minds, and also all those on our prayer chains, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for all the intentions, offered by our viewers on their screen of our uh, live streaming, that may God answer them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you assure us that you are always with us, with tender care, forgiveness, and mercy. Hear these prayers which we bring to you. Certain that you accept them with love, we ask this, through our Lord Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, in whose arms we rest. Amen. Amen.
praying, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through christ our lord amen. amen the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts we lift them up to the lord let us give thanks to the lord our god it, it is right, right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you O lord but in this time above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in their praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the ending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Pope Francis. David Rican, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Edward, and all the saints who have blessed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with thee. And, and with you. Let us offer to one another the sign of peace. with the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. At this time, first we have a prayer for vocations. God our Father, you made each of us to use our gifts in the body of Christ. We ask that you inspire young people whom you call to the priesthood and consecrated life to courageously follow your will. Send workers into your great harvest so that the gospel is preached, the poor are served with love, the suffering are comforted, and your people are strengthened by the sacraments. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And also uh, we do have a Pope Francis prayer to Mary in this time of COVID-19. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick. At the foot of your cross, of the cross, you participated in Jesus' pain with steadfast faith. You, salvation of the Roman people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide so that, as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the Father's will and to do what Jesus tells us. He, took our, he who took our sufferings upon himself and bore our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We seek refuge under your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our pleas, we who are put to the test, and deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life in a safe manner. Thanks be to God. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you very much. Father, I saw a Jill Leslie yesterday, and she just wanted to know when we were going to have a mass at all for you. Not sure when. Huh? Meaning every Sunday we've been here, so mm -hmm. we're going to go back to there ever. We can. It doesn't matter because uh, anyway, it's online. <laughs>